What's going on guys? Today I have a quick Hackintosh tip for you all about Apple's OS 10.9.1 update. This is Apple's first major update to Mac OS 10 Mavericks and so I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it on the Hackintosh, what the update entails, things that might happen. And now keep in mind that with, with OS updates, especially in the Hackintosh world, every single system is different. Uh, that's one thing about the Hackintosh, it is purely dependent on your hardware, how your experience will be. That's not just with upgrades, that's how you know the entire system functionality depends on the hardware you pick. So for that reason, I know I can't cover every single system in a video. It's it's actually impossible with all the different the thousands and millions of hardware configurations. I have two that I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. First, I have my three-year-old machine down here. Actually, it's like three, oh, pretty much three and a half now. But that's a socket 1366. Uh, you know, same socket as the old cheese grater Mac Pros. Uh, I'll be showing you guys on that one, as well as I have a little Haswell system up here. Let's say socket 1150. Uh, just a little Core i3 system that I have for you guys, and I'll be showing you guys, you know, how the update performs on that as well. So I feel like this is a pretty decent range of hardware that should give you guys a pretty good idea of what you can expect for this update. Now, I don't think there's any major features in this update. We'll actually. Get Get into the change log in just a second when it comes time to update but there's really nothing within this update that should just entirely brick your system uh, keep in mind I'm, I'll get into this a little bit later uh, you'll probably lose audio that's very common in the Hackintosh world I will uh, briefly walk through it in this video how you would go about restoring that if you've never done this before uh, but trust me upgrades while they can be a pain I really don't foresee 10.9.1 being a big deal and also something that is you know specific to the first update of any Mac OS there actually is no combo update and actually a while back on my channel I made a video about the differences between a Delta update and a combo update the combo update is you know the full update and it includes all the changes of the previous Delta updates in one single package since this is the first and at this point in time the only update there is no combo update there's only the Delta update so that's something that that, you know don't worry about uh, choosing combo or delta for this one because you have to go with the delta so with that long intro out of the way let's go ahead and update these machines so here we are on my first machine this is my three and a half year old x58 chipset socket 1366 build and uh, just to show you guys what I'm running in here so you guys can compare your hardware I do have a first generation Intel Core i7, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and I do have a GTX 760 which I just got for Christmas upgrade video coming very soon my second system is a Haswell Intel Core i3 based system running a Gigabyte Z87MX D3H motherboard, 8GB of Corsair Vengeance memory, as well as an AMD Radeon HD 6850 graphics card. But so with that out of the way, the first thing you want to do is open up the App Store. Now I do want to say that uh, before you do this, be sure you back up any files that you're not prepared to lose because like I said, this update really shouldn't bring any problems, but that's not to say that it can't happen. With any update across any computer, across any operating system, you always run the risk of something going wrong. And uh, me personally, I have terrible luck at times in my life, so uh, just be sure you back up anything that you really just would never want to lose. So if there's any pictures or any big projects you're working on, anything like that, back it up because you'll never kick yourself for making a backup. As you can see right here, I have my time machine always backing up everything, and I also have a bootable backup in case something does go wrong and I can you know, recover files. I recommend doing the same thing. You can also use Carbon Copy Cloner or Super Duper to clone your drive. There's many different ways to back up, and so there's really no excuse not to do that. So what we want to do here is, uh, I'll click more, and here's that change log I was talking about earlier. As you can see here, the update includes the following fixes. There's really no groundbreaking features or anything with this update. So we have, you know, improved support for Gmail, fixes reliability of smart mailboxes, in mail, in mail a couple times. So a lot of stuff in mail. There's really no, like I said, killer features to this update. Now, if you're one of those people that just don't want to fix what isn't broken, you could skip this update entirely. Your machine will still run. It'll still be an awesome computer. Me personally, I like to always be on the latest and greatest operating system. So I will go ahead and update to 10.9.1. But like I said, you absolutely don't have to. It's totally up to you. So because there is no combo update and we don't have that option, what you simply want to do here is click update. Now it will download, honestly I'm not quite sure of the file size, be sure if you do know the size of this download, uh, let me know in the comments down below so that other people can get sort of an idea for how long it's going to take. But uh, these updates do just kind of download by themselves in the background, so I don't think it's a very big update. And so what you want to do after you back up everything is simply click restart and cross your fingers. The update isn't very big and doesn't take long to install. After around 45 seconds of waiting, both machines restart and boot into OS X successfully, minus the loss of audio I mentioned earlier. 
So here we are after the update, and I'll come up to about this Mac. And as you can see, we have successfully updated to 10.9.1. Now something to keep in mind, like I pointed out earlier, I did lose audio. So now what we're going to have to do is, if you've come from the Windows world, we're basically going to have to install a driver, or a kernel extension as we call them in OS X. So in order to do that, you're going to need a copy of MultiBeast. If you don't already have this, you can get it from the Tony Mac forums. Uh, they actually have a download section right there, so you do have to have an account, but it's free. And trust me, if it's your first time building a house, Akatosh, that is an absolutely amazing form to be a part of. So if you don't have it already, then feel free to uh, download a copy of that. Uh, the latest version, I believe, is MultiBeast, I think 6.0.1. I just have version 6.0 here, and so that'll do just fine. And once again, this depends entirely on your hardware, but you just have to simply install the correct audio driver. So I do have the Realtek ALC. I do have a DSDT with my machine, but for example, on my Haswell system, I don't need a DSDT. So in that case, I'd go, you know, without DSDT. If you have a Haswell system or an Ivy Bridge system, chances are very likely that you don't even need to worry about DSDT. So you can just go without DSDT. But like I said, I do in fact use one. And from here, you simply select the audio chipset that your motherboard has. This might require some research on your part, but that's one thing that I've said in the past about owning a Hackintosh. You really do have to know your hardware, otherwise you will just have tons of fun and I'm of course being sarcastic when I say fun, uh, you know, figuring out what settings that you need. So for me, my board has an ALC889 audio chipset, and that's literally all I lost. My networking is still fine, I can pull up Twitter just fine, so uh, you know, my network is I'm honestly fine. The only thing I did lose with this update, and yours will very likely be the same, is audio. So after you do that, we're going to come over here to build. And as you can see, I'm only installing that one thing. Make sure you do have the correct drive. Click install. Sign your soul over to the devil here. And I'm going to enter my extremely secure password, which is slightly more secure than it usually is. And we're going to actually install this. And as you can see, the installation was successful, and now after a quick reboot, you'll find that you have fully functioning audio. So there you guys have it. There was the Mac OS 10.9.1 update being installed on two very different machines, and so at the end of the day, both results were exactly the same. Both the machines were able to install the update perfectly, both machines rebooted back up successfully into OS X, of course without audio, but fortunately that's a very easy fix as you guys just saw, but if you have any questions at all about what you just saw, feel free to post down below in the comments or on Roach Technology or Tony Mac, there's tons of great resources for this information out there, and so I do have to give this update two big thumbs up, uh, I, like I said, this these are two very different computers, so if both these machines ended up turning out this well, I imagine there's a very vast you know a, amount of hardware that this update will just give no problems on so if you're if you have any doubts I say go for it but of course just be sure you back up all your data and you should be good to go I do apologize for getting this video out a little late I know this update did come out quite a while ago but in case you missed it if you haven't seen it already check out my update video right here on my channel that'll kind of explain where I've been the past couple months and why I kind of took a little hiatus uh, so feel free to watch that but thank you guys very much for watching please like this video if it helped you at all and um, check me out on Twitter I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com. I hope to see you guys back here very soon.